Hi, welcome to a Lunchip video tutorial, sort of a remake, but there are always many new things in Onshape, so sometimes it's important to revisit some old exercises. Because right now I can do that crankshaft in a very different way. And you might notice there are some variables, and those variables control that crankshaft. So maybe change the width of that cheek to let's say 20 and the complete crankshaft adjusts. Same applies to those bearing journals. Maybe let's change this one to 30. Confirm. And the complete crankshaft adjusts. So Let's have fun with on shape. So let's first define those variables. Let's go here and call one the cheek width and let's start with a value of twenty millimeters. Then I need a length or a width for the main bearing journals and for the rod bearing journals. And I will abbreviate those. So let's start with one, call this rod bearing journal, RB journal, and that value, or length or width, whatever you want, let's call it length and the value might be 40 millimeter confirm then another one that will be the main bearing journal length and this should be maybe also 40 millimeters and then I will need a value which is calculated or it's defined with a formula. And I don't know the expression for it, so I will just call it segment. Segment, which consists of two cheeks, one rod bearing channel and one main bearing channel. Okay? And length and this should be defined by a formula and this should be two times the cheek width plus the rod bearing channel length plus the main bearing channel length which should result in 120 millimeters. Let's start with our, our first sketch and I need sort of a reference line. I will put this onto the front plane. Let's go for a sketch, select the front plane and just draw a line from that origin horizontally in that direction. The length might be, let's go for five times the segment length and enter. Okay, it's just for reference and confirm. Now the first real sketch for the cheeks I want to place on the right plane. So go for a sketch on the right plane here. Like that. And I need circles. One circle should be aligned with that origin and the diameter should be 80. Another one also aligned with that origin and this diameter should be 300. Now add some dimensions. That distance here should be 40 millimeter and the distance between this circle on the outside 
and that circle on the outside should be 167. Okay, now I will need some lines. Okay, and this could look something like this. Okay, let's add tangent constraints here and over there. Add a symmetry from this line to that line, and this should be the symmetry axis, and same from this one to that one, and again, that's the symmetry axis. Now, I need a dimension here, an angle, which should be 40 degrees. And that distance here should be 150 millimeter. Okay. Now let's trim. This looks pretty good. And finish that sketch. Now I want to make an extrude in that direction. So go for an extrude with that sketch here. And the depth should be that cheek width. So go here, type cheek, select it and confirm. Now let's rename those this part here. This should be a cheek. Okay? Let's hide it. Now for the bearing journals, let's do a sketch on the front plane and hide that sketch one, or I could use it, doesn't really matter. Let's go for that profile should look something like this. Okay, now some dimensions. So this length should be the rod bearing journal length. So this should be RB journal length, that's 40 millimeters, confirm. This should be five millimeter. And that one should be five millimeter as well. Now that distance here should be 24 and this here should be 28. Now let's align this with the origin. Go for coincident here. And that's the other way around, so let's change this one to 24 and the other one to 28. And confirm. Now, I could use that as rotation axis. So go for a revolve. I want to revolve this. You could use that as axis for the rotation or just this one. I want to use that one here. So confirm. Let's rename this one as well. So this would be the rod bearing journal. It's not in the correct position, but I will take care of that later on. Let's hide this. And I can you reuse this I can reuse that sketch here. So go for uh, copy sketch and put it onto the same plane. Paste sketch. 
go to that sketch, adjust it, this point with that one here, and change the values. So this one here should be the main bearing channel length, that's 40 millimeter as well. And those two dimensions should be changed to 42 and 38. So this would be 42 and this would be 38. And again make a revolve with that one and the axis maybe this one and confirm. Rename this one as well and call it main bearing journal. Now in order to proceed I want to make copies of those parts. I want to make copies in place and that's possible with the transform command. This is something new. I don't know when, since when it is possible, but it's possible now. So let's start with the cheek. I need two copies of this one. So let's blend them in. This one should be transformed and be copied in place, which gives me one copy. I need another one. Again, transform, copy in place, and confirm. Those two should be renamed. This should be cheek 1C, because it's a copy. And this should be renamed cheek 2C for copy. And those copies are associative. That's the whole point of this exercise, which means if I change this one, those copies will change as well. Now I need a copy of the RB journal. So go to transform, go to copy in place, confirm. This would be RB journal C because it's a copy and let's hide it and then make a copy of the main bearing journal confirm and this should be main bearing journal C because it's a copy and hide the original. Now those four parts have to be moved into the correct position. Let's start with this one. So this should be transformed and I can use that line as direction. So go for transform translate by line, that's possible. That would be this line here, that line. And it should be translated by from point to point. But I have no points, so I will change this to translate by x, y, z. So the cheek should be moved by the cheek width plus the rod bearing channel length, RB channel length, and confirm. Then the RB channel should be moved by the cheek width and 40 millimeters up. So that would be the set direction. So let's select this one, go to XYZ. That's the cheek width and the set direction should be 40 millimeters. You can param param use a parameter for this one as well, but that's up to you and confirm. Now the last one, the main bank channel should be moved two times the cheek width plus once 
the rod bearing channel length. So transform this one along the x direction and this should be two times the cheek length or width plus the rod bearing channel length and confirm which gives me one segment i could hide those planes by the way now there's another new option which allows me to keep the tools if i do a boolean operation that wasn't possible before so let's go to boolean and i want to make a union of those four parts one two three four and i want to keep the tools and confirm which means i have a new part which is the complete segment so let's go there rename it and call it segment now i should hide those cheek copies and the journal copies now i want to use five copies of that segment so i have to do it five times let's select it go for copy in place confirm another one copy in place another one again copy in place two more And the last one, okay, and it's always good practice to rename those parts, otherwise you will get confused. So rename this one to segment one. And of course, you should add a C because it's a copy. Okay, next one to segment 2C. Segment 3C. Segment 4C. And segment... 5C. Hide the original segment. Now we have to bring those four segments into the correct position. That's done very easy. So go for segment 2C, transform it in X direction, and the distance would be the segment length. once confirm then another one there's also an option to make a copy with the movement so transform segment 3 and this should be moved in x direction two times the segment length Confirm. Now this one should be moved three times. The segment length. Confirm. And the last one four times. confirm now if you want to test it you should test it at every step but let's just change this value to let's say 30 and it should adjust so i made 
uh, error let's undo select it make it 30 millimeter and confirm and it's just great and let's undo that change now i have to rotate those again it's a transformation so go for transform now i want to rotate it around that axis here the axis would be this line here of course and i want to rotate the second one this one here and the angle should be 144 confirm then another transform another rotate same axis and segment this segment here and the angle should be 216 next one would be this one here so go for another transform another rotate this segment here axis should be again this one and the angle should be two no sorry two eight eight and the last one rotate and this would be the axis and this should be rotated and the angle should be 72 and I've just noticed it's just the other way around my preview crankshaft was the other way around the angles were the other way around but that doesn't really matter you just would have to change those transform values to minus just using the positive value so we can change this afterwards no problem add here the minus confirm change this one to minus that one to minus and this one to minus 144 degree and confirm yeah that's more like it now for the um, pull the end and the flange same procedure so let's go for two more sketches let's hide those go for the sketch on the front plane and this might look something like this here Okay, add dimensions. So this length should be 150. This here should be 5. This here should be 45. this should be 105 now that distance should be 22 this one here should be 30 that one 
38 and the last one Finish that sketch, make another revolve with that sketch here, use that line as axis, confirm. Let's rename that part, call it pulley end. Let's make a copy in place, transform this one here. Copy in place, confirm, rename that part as well. So that's the pulley and copy. Hide the original one. Now for the flange, another sketch, again on the front plane. And that might look something like this. Okay. Add that constraint here. Add dimensions. This here should be 25. This might be 15, that distance might be 55, and that one here might not, might be 30. And I think I've snap this one onto the wrong one. So let's just hide sketch one. Then I can do the proper dimension like this and that should be 30. Leave that sketch, make a revolve, select the sketch, use this one as axis and Confirm. Again, make a copy in place. Transform. Copy in place. Select it. Confirm. This should be renamed. That would be the flange. Hide it. And that would be the copy of the flange. So call it Lange C. Now I want to make a last boolean operation and put my crankshaft together. So go for a boolean and maybe show all the objects you want to use. This should be visible, visible, visible. Mm, that's visible, that's visible. Yep, but I see that flange has to be transformed to the correct position. So go to translate by XYZ and that should be five times the segment length. And confirm. Mm, that's okay. And now make a boolean operation. So I want this one, this one, that one, this one, that one, this one, and that one, and keep the tools, which gives you a really nice and structured model. And the last part would be the complete crankshaft. So rename this one as well and call it crankshaft. And I'm done. Hope this was helpful and interesting for you. You can use this method for many, many other things as well. So if you liked it, please give it a like or leave a comment. If you want to see more, please give it a like or leave a comment. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would really help. And please, you could watch my LinkedIn learning videos because there I could earn money. 
and thanks for watching. See you to the next one. Bye-bye.